that are taking longer than we expected. <laughs> um, it's coming along, though. I think we're we're getting really close. Um, we might we might be able to submit a PR today. I'm optimistic. Um, yeah, I think probably when we submit the PR, there'll be a couple things to to like talk over and see if we like how we're doing doing it, but. Cool. Sounds good. Looking forward to it. I know it's painful now, but I think once we can decommission concourse, we'll be happier in the long run. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for taking this on. I've been punting this down the road for ages. <laughs> Okay, release planning. I'm gonna assume, same as last week, we're gonna ship this when we're done the release automation. Yeah. Uh, sounds good. And then I see stack build packs on the agenda. Got specific things you wanna talk about, Jesse? Yeah, I wanted to kind of just open up the discussion before I get too far into this again. Um, so with provides requires and stack build packs, the kind of running assumption right now is that we need at least two build plans output, one for like the build phase and one for the extend phase is kind of what I'm calling it, just to, um, you know, set out some terminology. But I'm kind of wondering, do we think there's value in having a third build plan of just the build, just the privileged build packs build plan? Or do we think that the build and the privileged build packs could share the same build plan, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, or do we think they should share the same one, I guess? Like, I don't, I don't know enough about the internals yet of like where these build plans are used. So I wasn't sure whether splitting it out be good or bad in that case, because you, you do have two specific groups of build packs, right? You've got the privilege group that runs first because they sort of don't respect the order of the rest of the build packs anyway, and they run as root and then we re-execute for the rest of the build packs. So I'm trying to figure out whether the detect that creates this plan uh, that has other provides and requires and knows the, which build packs are doing it, um, can that same plan be used for kind of both stages of build, uh, like the non-root stage and the root stage, basically, or privileged and unprivileged, if that makes sense. And, uh... Talk through this out loud if you don't mind. Sure. Yes, of <laughs> course. Yeah, because I may be making some assumptions along the way as well that are incorrect. I feel like for the most part, one versus two doesn't matter in the build image because what's in the build plan at that point is like a set of things that we're going to give to a provider. Yeah. Right? So yeah. if it's in two files or one file, whatever. I think the one place that breaks down is if a build pack claims it can provide something, but then on the ground it decides not to, we have mechanisms to sort of like kick that requirement down to the next provider. So I feel okay. like the way to answer this question is to say, is there ever a case where a stack build pack opts out of providing something and then a regular build pack picks it up? Do we want to allow that? Yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of what I was thinking is the build plan because it's a collection of providers. That's the that's the stuff I was unfamiliar with. So yeah, falling back to the other provider. Um, I mean, I guess if it's a single, yeah, I guess I don't know where that fallback mechanism happens. I guess I guess if it never, if a stack pack didn't provide something, how would how would it fall back to the next one? I guess. To the, to the non stack pack. Uh, so this is going to change in the next build pack API, but right now the mechanism is that uh, build pack has provided a plan file, and in it are all the things that it sort of, all the requirements that match its, mm -hmm. uh, that it said it could provide. And if you just do nothing with that file, none of those requirements will be given to future build packs, even if they also claimed they could provide them. Okay. But if the build pack goes and deletes an entry out of that file, it's basically saying, 
I'm not doing this one, and then it will be given to the next provider. After we okay, change, so maybe it does need to be a single file. Yeah, okay. We've approved a RFC that changes the mechanism through which this happens. So instead of deleting something out of the file, you write an entry to build Toml, um, and then it gets given to a different provider. But in my mind, whether one or two files makes sense comes down to are these participating in the same build client? I think, yes. Like, I think they are, yeah, because it's really yeah. two, and that's kind of where I'm trying to draw the line, because one trial is now going to output two plans, right? Like conceptually, like one detect trial that succeeds, which is also very confusing. And I may, I may like, you know, have to raise a flag for help on, on how this trial stuff works exactly, you know, because there's retry stuff and, skipping uh skipping stack build packs is is complicated like if if because they can provide extra things that build packs can't do today um and uh anyway the uh yeah single trial outputting basically uh two plans a build plan a run plan but then also three sets of different build packs because you've got privileged build packs which is basically the stack group right that ends up running um and then you've got the normal build packs which is just a collection of build packs. And then you've got the run phases collection of build packs, the extend phase, and those can be different, right? Because you may have something that only is a run that only uh, extends the run image um, and opted out of doing anything in the build plan. So you've got a stack pack potentially not in the build phase, but only in the run phase, and, but not in the actual normal build phase anyway. So it's, it's getting complicated. Um, so I wasn't sure, like, do we think we can actually achieve that with a single detect run? Like, is that a single trial? Can it turn in to all this properly? I think so. It's a little, it can okay. be a little complicated to implement, but I don't see any blocker. Okay. That's, that's kind of what I was after, is if this threw up a red flag of like, well, there's no way we'll be able to do this from a single detect phase or detect execution. Okay. The one, the thing I would, the part of me that likes simplicity and wants to build in complexity later is like, can't the stack build pack group be the same for build and run? And then, you know, if the run image is getting past build colon, whatever, it just does nothing. But I actually think we shouldn't do that because whether or not to spin up an entire container, if it needs to exactly. do nothing, is a really yeah. big decision. Yeah. Yeah, because so someone's going to have to understand those prefixes. Um, and so right now, one of the questions we posed to Joe, and I think you wrote the RFC, I think actually, to relax the build constraints or the provide constraints, um, is the build plans will not have those prefixes in them at all. Um, and so kind of regardless of what happens with the dependency, uh, because we're outputting sp specific plans for the different phases, then we can do that at like build plan creation time, basically, so that no one has to think about those prefixes, um, if it's a mix in, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, and then so your dependency that you only need for run just would not be in the build plan, but it would only be in the run plan, the run build plan. The name is getting really weird too. All right. Okay. Well, I think that, one. Any other I think fun that ones? makes sense. Um, so all the logging is getting really weird because we have all this stuff of like resolving plan and then we're like X of Y build packs are participating and then we log out all the build packs. But like, I don't know what this is supposed to look like for like things that are only going to run on the extend phase side of things. Um, mm -hmm. Because you still kind of want to know that stack pack is going to run. It, like, it did pass detection. It did you, you kind of want that in your detection results, but I think we may need to like change the change the logging here to be like, you know, three or four are gonna run in the build phase and one of four is gonna run in the extend phase um, or whatever in the run phase. If, if you, you know, cause you are outputting two plans. So like a single stream of logs is not really easy to parse when you don't know. I wonder if you could do something that's like, you know, five of seven build packs running and the seven is sort of the full set of any everything in the group but then like you know after you put the names you could yeah. say build only or run only if it was 
if it's specific. specific. Yeah, and if it's in both, just ignore it. So maybe it'll, yeah. It's a little weird for regular build packs because you're like build only, and it's like well. Well, maybe we only do it. If it <laughs> yeah, maybe we only do yeah. it if it's a privileged build pack, which is kind of the internal mechanism that's really defining these differences right now. Is whether it's a privileged build pack or not, um, and I don't like that word either. I don't really know how to make that better. Like stack packs are not really defined um, anywhere. I really prefer build. stack pack to privileged build pack personally, but or stack build pack. We said if yeah. we don't like stack pack, but everyone wants to say stack pack. Like sometimes we should just let ourselves say the words we all want to say. Yeah, yeah I keep trying to like make sure I write stack build packs everywhere, but then stack packs is what everyone says out loud. Um, okay, yeah. Well, I'll play around with the logging. So I guess it gets a little weird because you could have like uh, one of seven, and then you're going to have like. Uh, like all of them will just say, I guess, extend only potentially, right? Like maybe you just have like almost all um, or none of them run in the build phase. You just, you've only, you only have extend phase additions, which would be a little weird, but it could, it could make sense in like an extreme situation with like a. Uh, My suggestion in there also isn't because I think that's the best of all theoretical UXs. Like I don't actually know the answer to that question. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, I think the smallest change that would also express the intent. So you don't like wind yourself in it not doing logging yeah. when we're still in the exploration phase. Okay. Makes right. sense. Because then later once we get all the functionality down, we can redesign the output if we want, but you know. Right. Makes sense. Um, I guess there will be Pack's going to have to do some more work once we kind of get further in on this, obviously, um, to do the initial like upfront detection. Like right now, it looks at the the build image to figure out the mix-ins and the run image to figure out the mix-ins kind of upfront. Um, I know now build packs can express mix-ins and build pack toml. Um, so I guess, I don't know that we plan on doing that work, but I guess it will have to be done at some point so that pack can fail fast, I guess, right? If you like, if a build pack yeah. downstream. I think whatever validation pack does there, we're still gonna have to redo it in the life cycle. You know, sort of like your classic yeah. client, client server. server. Yeah. And that's what validation. I was trying to get at. Do we have to do the server, like the, the, the life cycle bit of this validation? Cause it doesn't, it doesn't validate mix in requirements today, does it? Only back does, I think, right? That's true. That's true, yeah. But okay. I think for these dynamic ones, we may have to, because otherwise, how do you know? What... Yes, the dynamic ones, I do think that we're going to have to do something there eventually. Um, but for the static ones that only exist in build pack tomals now that are extensions of mixins, because you can, you can provide a requirement in a build pack toml, right? Like Most cycles still, still gonna have to do something, right? Because if an application says install my package, yeah. but the no stack pack can't install it, we want a fail detection, right? Yeah, I think so. That makes sense. Yeah, and then just uh, thinking about making it reusable uh, logic for multiple platforms, I think it'd be nice for the lifecycle to provide it at minimum as a library that pack could consume. Um, I do have a question about, about, I guess, the current existing lifecycle or mix-in validation and it being in pack. Uh, I don't recall those conversations, to be honest, but is there a reason why they don't exist in lifecycle? Does it just not make sense? Or are we just expecting a certain picture of the world? Um, I think it could make sense to redo it in lifecycle even with the world we have now. But I think the set of possible errors is smaller when you're not asking for mixins to be installed on the fly. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think for platforms like Tekton, it always would have been helpful if the lifecycle did a sanity check and we just didn't do it. Yeah. Cool. It, it does bring up the run image. You have to know the run image like upfront, right? which is probably why it was done in pack, if I had to guess, right? Because before the run image, pack was the only one that's sort of picking the run image 
that it wants to pass to the that particular phase. This was long before Creator, right? So. Yeah, I think we want the first time the run image enters the lifecycle ends with the run image is during export. So I think lifecycle would always fail, wouldn't fail run image mixing validations until export, um, which is why doing it in the platform first is nice because that's a long time to wait for your failure. And I don't think we'd want to change lifecycle inputs just so we could do that early because the client can always provide the early check. Yeah, I would think that for that case, you'd still want the validation on the export, right? Because if you're thinking about lifecycle as just these uh, individual binaries, like that binary should be kind of ensuring that that is true, right? Uh, but yeah, and then the platform for the sake of a better user experience could then leverage similar logic for that validation way up front. Yep, I agree with that. Tecton's gonna, it's gonna be like impossible to write a Tecton uh, template for run extend image without like the users telling you what run image it's gonna be unless we introduce Kanika uh, to do like a dynamic, you know. Um, I actually liked that idea a lot. When Stephen first said it, I was like, classic Stephen crazy idea. But yeah, the more I we, thought about it, I was like, no, no, I think this could actually work. The problem is <laughs> no Windows support yet. But the, uh, but yeah, we, yeah, I've been playing around with like, the idea of having instead of a single creator having like uh like two sort of canico based ones but that they could still run on like you could actually run this like canico style creator on the builder image and then wipe the builder image except for the things that you've done with canico and then mount the run image only if you need the extend phase um and then and then at that point you've got the continuation of the layers directory um it means sequentially, right? You're not, or you could run a second container, I guess, if you want to really do it at the same time. Uh, but then, and then you go into exporter as its own image at the end with just all the layers, and it could could make it more dynamic for knowing the run image, not having to know the run image until at least. Yeah, we just talked to some VMware folks who are using Canico for something else as well. Um, and they're doing similar things where they're extending some images with Canico for like CA certs. Um, and that's sort of the use case that we're playing with too. So, but Yeah, I kind of wish Creator was Canico Creator, like just Canico Creator, even if it wasn't a, like just as a small scratch image that basically expanded the, uh, the build image. Um, and could you could potentially pass like the uh, the image in a cache, so they could you know not have to download, not pull from a registry. But... I feel like uh, having watched KPAC performance in different environments. Uh, I think sometimes depending on what I as you're running in pulling in a registry can be faster than reading from a cache unintuitively. Because uh, if you're running in like GCP or something and the registry you're using is GCR, they like really Too have fast. great yeah. network speeds in that situation. And some of these like persistent volume mounts actually really slow read write speeds. But obviously the whole game changes if you know, you're know you running in GCP but you're talking to Docker Hub or something, right? Yes, yeah, exactly. But yeah, that makes sense. Um, Cool. All right. Well, um, that's it on stack packs for now. I mean, there's loads of tests to fix and plans to create, but um, that's, that's the main thing is just make sure I wasn't blocked. So. All right. Should we each get back to our individual tasks that are taking much longer than we thought they would? <laughs> I know mine's stretched on for weeks more than I thought it would, but it's not relevant to this group. <laughs> See y'all later.